This video is an introduction to z-scores. So whenever you see me make a video that's called intro to something, it means there's a lot of information to know. And this is just, hey, here's what it is. And here's a little bit to know about it. And later in the course, we're going to discover a lot more detail about it. So if you are not in my class and you've just stumbled across this video, this is not the video for you. That I'm not going to go through how to find all of the different probabilities to the left and to the right. All I'm doing is finding a z-score and talking about what it is. So what is a z-score? Uh, a z-score, which you'll sometimes see referred to as a standard score, tells us how far a value is from the mean by computing how many standard deviations it is from the mean. So this is key, how many standard deviations it is away from the mean. That's what a z-score tell us. It tells us the number of standard deviations to the left or right of the mean. So the z-score for a population and for a sample is essentially going to be determined in the same way. We've talked about this uh, notation a little bit in previous lessons. Remember that when we're dealing with a population, all of the uh, parameters, because population goes with parameter, are always going to be Greek letters. And that's why we have mu here and we have sigma here for the population parameters. So this is the population mean and this is the population standard deviation. The Z is just going to represent our standard score or Z score. And the X is the observed value or the value that we're testing. Now for a sample value instead of a population, we're just going to use lowercase letters for those same statistics. Remember population parameter, sample statistic. So X bar is the sample mean and S is the sample standard deviation. But it's really the same thing. So you're going to hear me say observed minus expected over the standard deviation a lot. You're probably going to get really sick of it, so sorry about it. But that's because it works all the time. What's the observed value? What's the expected value? And this is what's expected. We expect the mean, whether it is a sample mean or a population mean and then the standard deviation which could be the population or the sample so let's take a look at how to calculate a z-score remember to calculate a z-score we're taking the observed minus expected over the standard deviation which might be expected could be mu or it could be x bar and standard deviation, oops, that looks like a minus sign, so let's not do that. Standard deviation could either be that sigma value or S, depending on if it is a population or a sample. Really, it doesn't matter if it's a population or a sample because it's going to be calculated the same way. The mean score on the math section of the SAT is 500. That's this value. Mean is expected, 500. Standard deviation is 150 points. Obviously, that's this value. What is the standard score? That's what's Z. For a student who scored 630. 630 is my observed value, the value that I'm testing. So if mu is 500, sigma is 150, value of interest is 630. All I'm going to do is plug the values in. And the only thing you have to watch out for when you are calculating a z-score, the only error that I see students make, well, two errors. One error is quite often students will switch these around. Um, so don't be that student, because remember, these values are always the values that are given with either the sample or the population. The mistake that I see a lot of people make is they plug this into their calculator as 630 minus 500 divided by 150. And I know we've talked about this error before. 
remember that your calculator or Excel or any other thing that you're using to calculate this is going to do this part first because order of operations says multiplication division happens before subtraction. So just make sure that you're using parentheses when you plug it into your calculator. So what does this mean? Well, this tells us that the student's math SAT score of 630 is approximately 0.87 standard deviations above the mean. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a visual person. So let's remember how we did the empirical rule. Remember when we did the empirical rule, we said the mean is in the middle. And then we use the standard deviation to go up 150 because that's standard deviation. So that's 650 and up 150 more than that would be 800 and then 950. And then to the left, I'm going to subtract 150. So that's 350. 250. Now, this is what we expect. We expect 500. This student scored 630. That's somewhere over here. 630. Now, why am I showing you a picture? Because you're going to see this picture over and over and over, and I want you to understand what it means. We just found a Z score. Let me tell you what a Z score does. A z-score standardizes it so that a z-score of 0 is in the middle and a z-score of 1 is the same as a raw score of 650. So it's one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So what we just found, which was 0.87, if you'll notice, happened in here, which is between 0 and 1. And so essentially it's saying it's 0.87 standard deviations above the mean. Let's take a look at how we can use Excel to verify our result. Now, unfortunately, there is no function in Excel that we can use to calculate the z-score. But what we can do is one of two things. We can either just use exactly what we did before, 630 minus 500, again in parentheses, divided by 150. Notice all I did was start with an equal sign that tells Excel to calculate that value for me. And notice I got the same result I did using a normal calculator. Now the other thing that you can do, and this will be helpful to you if you have to calculate a lot of z-scores, um, which you probably will, is instead I can use a cell for mean, um, a cell for standard deviation, and a cell for my observed value or the value that I'm testing. Now if I do that, then I can set up a z-score function that will calculate the z-score each time. So my z-score is going to be the observed value minus the expected value, which is the mean, close the parenthesis, divided by the standard deviation. So let's see how this works. All I will have to do is plug in the mean, which is 500, and the standard deviation, which is 150, and the observed value, or the value that I'm checking, which is 630, and notice I get the same value again. Now the advantage to this way that I just did it is now if I get my next question and it says, okay, what about a z-score for an observed value of 400? I can just change the 400 and it calculates the new score for me. So I always try to use Excel to my advantage like that. Let's take a look at a calculus test question. Now notice what I've done here is I've just copied that formula over that we just talked about. So this is where z-scores are really important, is when we're able to use them to compare values, because quite often we're looking at comparing values that shouldn't really be compared. So when you hear people say comparing apples to apples or apples to oranges, you can't compare apples to oranges, but this lets you do that. This standardizes everything. That's what a standardized score or a z-score does, is it standardizes it so that the mean is directly in the middle, the standard deviation is, 
you know, one to the right and so on. So if I'm looking at two students in two different calculus classes, we all know that some teachers grade harder than others. So let's say Jody scored an 87% on her test. So that's X. That's the value that we're testing. Um, her class had a mean of 80 with a standard deviation of 5. So her z-score is 1.4, which means, again, down here, I've got 0 in the middle. Whoa. 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So where's Jody? She's 1.4. She's about right here. Now let's take a look at Ashley. Ashley has a mean of 82. I'm sorry, not a mean of 82, an X value. Her score was an 82, which is five points below what Jody scored. But the mean of her class was a 73, which is much lower, and a standard deviation of six, so a little bit more spread. Well, she's at 1.5. So what does that mean? That means if we're actually comparing apples to apples, that Ashley is just a little bit above Jody because she has a z-score of 1.5 versus a z-score of 1.4 for Jody. As I said at the beginning of this video, we have just barely scratched the surface of z-scores and how we will use them, but it is a great introduction um, and we will get more into depth later in this course. Up next, however, we're going to take a little detour into probability. So the next several chapters um, they will get increasingly harder, but the very next video is an intro video, again, intro to probability, so it's just going to be the basics of probability.